So this time we're going to look at creating a hunger system. So I'm going to get my mesh, my character, sorry, and open him up by just going to the hierarchy and clicking edit blueprint. Um, then we're going to, firstly, we're going to need to create a variable called hunger. And we could either do hunger as an int or a float. Um, we'll just do it as a float and hit compile. And by default, we'll say we're full. Full is 100%. Now, what we want to do is sort of like every, I don't know, few seconds deplete the hunger a little bit. So we're gonna to need to create a function. Uh, so let's find our start event. Have we got an event begin play in here? We do not, so let's create one. Event begin play. So on event begin play, we're going to use a function and we'll call this hunger f for hunger function. Now, we in our hunger function, we're going to get hunger and then we're going to deplete it. So we'll just do float minus float. Yeah, one will do and then we'll set hunger again. Uh, let's go to our graph and we're going to need to um, function by timer. So function by timer. And let's get our function name, which is hunger f. Hunger f. And loop every, for now, I'll just do 0 0.1 to test. Now, Let's also just quickly throw a quick print string on this as well to see if it works. Print string. So it's always good to actually test what we're doing. So we can see our hunger's going down. Okay, that's working. Um, for t sake of test, I'm actually going to just do by four. Um, just so we can do this faster. And let's say when we get to um, zero, so we'll do a quick branch. So hold B, which is like an if statement, or we can directly click and type in branch. If hunger is equal to or less than zero, we'll wait a second. We'll keep our print string in there for, for now. So if hunger is less than or equal to zero, what we'll do is we'll get our character to fall over. So to get our character to go into ragdoll, what we'd need to do is set simulate physics. And as well as that, we also need to, on our mesh, on our change our collision type, so what we're doing is we're turning on simulate physics. So tick. Um, but instead of it being collision preset character mesh, we need to change to ragdoll. Can we do that from here? Collision preset. No, we cannot. Just have ragdoll. Let's have a look. What can we do? We need to change this collision type. Let's try the word collision type. Right then. Set collision type. All static dynamic pawn. Will physics body do it? Mm, I don't know if it will. I think we might need ragdoll. I'll just do a quick test on this and we'll find out. It does, but it falls through the ground. Um, so let's not do that. What about if instead, if we just set it to to ragdoll? Because it's only when simulate physics turned on that it should work anyway. Right, so run, run, run. When health is zero, ugh. 
<laughs> we'll keel over and die. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and at which point we'd do like our game over. So that'll do. So we've got a simple hunger system that depletes. Um, now what we also want is to um, have something you know, to increase that hunger system. So what should we do? You could make an object um, that when you collide with it, it would cast to your player and improve it. So this is similar to the collectibles video, um, but let's just do this real quick. So blueprint class, actor, we'll just call fruit underscore BP. Open that up. And we'll add a component, a sphere, to make it look a bit like an apple. We will scale it down a bit, because it's probably a bit big. 0.5, and we've got a green in here. We've got coin mat. We'll just do dull, sure, why not? That'll probably change it a bit yellowy. It'll do, that'll do for now. That's our apple. Um, so, what we want to do now is, now we've got this working, we want to want to do a, a collision overlap. So let's get, should we do it on the fruit or the character? Let's do it on the mesh. So on a mesh, in fact, no, let's do it on a capsule component. Or should we do it on a mesh? We want a begin overlap. And we'll cast this to fruit. And then we'll just do another print string that says hello and let's drag a fruit into a world we need to firstly we'll need to turn off the collision so it's just a trigger on the sphere so let's go to our physics and instead of being block all, we'll change it to trigger. See, we can see it printed hello. So instead, now what we want it to do is just pull this in a bit of space, get rid of you, um, and we will just set hunger. So get hunger and set hunger to Oops, I don't know, plus 10, we'll just do plus 10. Or maybe plus 20, whatever you want it to be. So that, and then we also want to destroy the actor. So, get the fruit, half went back up. But still running out of health. Um, and that's pretty much the whole system. Now we just need to send information to the screen. So if we've got a widgets folder, a UI folder, we need to quickly create a widget. Right click, user interface, widget. In game. And just go to W. Crack that open. Let's create some text, which we'll call hunger, and we'll get some more text, which we will bind. So let's create a binding, and we want to cast to our player, cast to third person character. We want to get hunger because we don't want to leave it all on print strings. Um, get, I think it's either player control or player pawn. Let's get player control and see if that works. Nope, let's try. Get player pawn. Cool. Awesome, and then finally just to add this to our screen, remove the print string and we're done. So blueprint, open our level blueprint. Event, begin play 
create widget. Add the viewport. Um, that should be good. Let's just get rid of the print string on the third person, which is in our function. So we don't need you anymore. We're done. Done with you. All right, let's give it a test, make sure it all works. So as you can see, we're printing there in the top left. <laughs> I love how he dies, it's so epic. Um, in this case, it'd be a situation of um, probably making it look a little bit prettier. Like it normally is too in the corner, you couldn't really see it. Make the text a bit bigger. Do whatever you need to do on your player when um, in the function, you know, whenever he dies. So this would be the dead part. You probably want to do other stuff as well, like maybe um, after a delay. Oops. Oh, we can't do a delay um, in here. What we can do is you could fire a custom function. Can we create a custom event from in here? Can we call a custom event? Add a custom event. Deaders. Go back to a function and call the event. Deaders. And then we will delay by one second. Maybe we'll create a dead widget as well as his. You died of starvation. And then we'll just open the level again. Um, and the level's called third person example map. Third person example map. Now, obviously, we've done this for a hunger and fruit system, but you really could do this for any kind of health based system. Now, if you want it to stop going uh, minus, we just need to put a, a clamp on it. So, if we go to our hunger, um, Get this whole thing here and get a clamp. Clamp float. So that way it can't go under zero. Cool. There you go. Um, that's the nice fun one. Hope you learned something.